Coffee with the Editor is proudly brought to you by IRZ and the Naledi Group of Companies, which includes Naledi Ring Rollers, Composite Brake Components and Naledi Foundries. So next up is Coffee with the Editor, uh, is Adama Dean. He is the Senior Advisor to, um, to the CEO and Project Manager. For the high speed. Just high speed, high speed hey? Rail project. <laughs> high speed rail project in the African continent. Mr. Dean. Yes, Miss hey? Dean. Miss, Mrs. Mrs. Dean. <laughs> you can study if you want. <laughs> so, there's been lots of talk about the intercontinental high speed rail. And I'm quite keen to understand how far you guys are. Um, I picked up recently that um, Zambia is, has been nominated to manufacture the train components for the high-speed rail. Is it really a reality? Are we making progress? Do we have the money? Well, thank you very much. This is a very interesting topic that is be becoming, you know, the everyday, you know, um, conversation. conversation in you know, in circles of policy making and even in industry. Let me say that uh, since 2013, when the African Union Commission um, unveiled Agenda 2063, one of the 12 flagship projects, as you may know, mm -hmm. is the High Speed Rail Project. And we were tasked as NEPAD agency then, now the African Union Development Agency, to spearhead the technical studies, which we are currently undertaking with CPCS of Canada, the consulting firm, mm -hmm. to help us frame what we call the high-level scoping study. Obviously, that is the first step before we move to detailed you know, studies and business case planning and so forth. Mm -hmm. So today, as I speak to you, we've already completed the, the inception report mm -hmm. of the Continental High Speed Road Project. Yes. And we are going to validation in next month Okay. in Nairobi to be able to say to stakeholders that here is what we envisage to be the priority corridors upon which we can select three pilot projects mm. and then we will go next to the detailed engineering as well as the financing. Okay. Obviously no country yet has been identified because this will be done empirically through some technical analysis so that we, you know, we, we map out the most viable routes for business case and private sector involvement, participation, participation in its financing. Okay. With regards to manufacturing of the rolling stock and other components, this hasn't started as far as the, the continental high speed is concerned. Mm -hmm. I am sure, as you know, countries are also complementing the, the continental framework. Mm. So they are all doing things that will add up to helping the, the African Union achieve this capacity of being able to manufacture the sort of critical components yes. of the of the rail infrastructure that we envisage to build in the first 10 years mm. of um, Agenda 2063, which is 2013 to 2023. And what is the, in a nutshell, what is the biggest strategy around transport and the 2040? Was it 2040? I read somewhere there's a 2040. Was That was in your notes, your project notes, but... Is that a UIC or is that the Africa Rail well, 2040? There is an Africa Rail 2040 vision. Okay. Because as you know today in Africa, in terms of modal split, you currently have almost like a 90-10 in terms of modal split, where you have 90% of the cargo yes. are on road transport yes. and the 10% is on freight. Now, this has to change, mm -hmm. especially if we are talking about the continental free trade area. We are talking about capacity and competitiveness of rail yes. to be able to move the envisaged freight that we hope that it will come with one market mm. solution for Africa. So the strategy is, why don't we put more investment, more capacity building, regulatory you know, streamlining, yes. so that the rail sector will balance itself with roads. Yeah. So in a nutshell, that is the basis of the strategy of 2040 Rail Vision, that we shift the balance, make it more parity, yeah. and be able to support that bigger market that mm. we know today, as you know, in Africa, the current 
um, into Africa trade sits around 13 to 17 percent mm. of trade in between countries. Yes. With an open market, you're looking at 20 to 22 percent sure. jump. That's and that's just, just, just very conservative because mm. even people say 50 percent. Because you are going to have liberalized markets, yes. you know, common tariffs. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to really be bogged down by multiplicity of tariffs and different regimes, mm -hmm. trade, trading regimes that currently exist in Africa. Well, whilst I've got you here, let's talk about this particular summit being um, a joint, I, I assume, a joint initiative between you and the International Union of Rail. Yes, yes. It's the first digital summit. Will we see another one? Of course, this is just the beginning. That's why it is called the first. <laughs> just but, the beginning. Yeah, I mean, Africa is the frontier. I mean, as you know, and I was just talking to one of my UIC colleagues, in Europe, they have gone through these legacy technologies. Now, with the advent of new generation technologies, far beyond the GSMR, you know, we are now talking about the fifth generation of um, 5G, yes. which Africa stands to benefit. So we're not looking at all technology. We are going to live for. And that's why that's why Africa as a continent of 54, 55 countries will be the most um, ready, you know, as a continent to benefit from. We don't need any new old old technology. We just have to live for NEP has now African Union. Now African Union Development Agency. Okay. And then um, I hear that there is uh, talk about re-envisaging or reimagining the African Railway Union. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. So what's, what's involved there? Well, you know, today in Africa, the UAR, the Union of African Railways, mm -hmm. has been the platform upon which public policy and discourse at the technical level of experts yes. was was concentrated until when the, the UAR you know, got defunct, so to speak. And obviously going forward into the 2063 vision for high speed and rail, in general, rail infrastructure in general, we need to revive that entity, that um, stakeholder platform. And with the support of UIC and governments in, in, in Africa, especially with the leadership of the African Union Commission in Addis Ababa, we are going to reconvene to set this you know old baby back you know on his feet so yes. that we can have a champion that speaks to 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 stakeholders for the african agenda of rail revitalization and development